In Kubernetes, we can expose publicly our services by specifying the type load balancer. And that will create a public IP address for each one of my services. But I don't want to have many IP addresses as I want to make some cost savings. And in addition to that, I want to use a fully qualified domain name like mycompany.com. And when I go from slash app one, that will route me to my service one that will go to uh, my application one in uh, Kubernetes. And when I turn, when I go to slash app two, that will route me to a different uh, deployment in my cluster. This could be achieved using the ingress controller. An ingress resource will get the traffic coming from the load balancer and it will go to route this traffic into the different services or the different applications in my Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes API provides the interface, but not the implementation for an ingress resource. So we need to install it ourselves. Many ingress controllers are available and supported for Kubernetes, like the Nginx controller, the HA proxy ingress, Contour, Citrix ingress controller, API gateways like Traffic, Kong, Ambassador, or service meshes like Istio, and also cloud managers ingress controllers like Azure Application Gateway Ingress Controller, AGAC, or the AWS ALB Ingress Controller, Ingress GCE, and so on. In this video, we'll see how to install an ingress controller into Kubernetes, then we'll create two demo applications, and then we'll create an ingress resource in order to map the traffic into those two different applications. Let's learn in this lab how to use an ingress controller in Kubernetes in order to route the traffic into different services. The content for this lab is available on this GitHub repository where you will find the different YAML files for the ingress and for the deployments along with the few commands that we'll be using during this lab. This demo will start by deploying two different applications into our Kubernetes cluster using two different uh, services. Then we'll go to install the Nginx ingress controller using the Helm charts. And after that, we'll go to configure an ingress resource in order to route traffic between those two different uh, services. Switching back to my VS Code where I have already cloned the project in my local machine. Here I show you the two different apps that I want to deploy. So those will be deployed into the app namespace. For that, I have an YAML file for that. And then I would have the first app that will create a deployment to deploy this container and then it would route traffic to that container through this uh, service called Web App one SVC. And note how it's using load balancer. And the same for my second application that will uh, use another uh, container image. And then it will also use a load balancer uh, to route traffic into it using the service called Web App uh, 2 SVC. Let's go first deploy those two applications. And don't forget, I give you here all the commands needed to run those uh, apps. So I'll go to copy those into my command line. And here I start by deploying the namespace for my app, deploying the first app, and then deploying the second app along with it. That will deploy the deployment with the service. And now if I try to get the services from the app namespace, I would get here two services that runs my application with two different external IP addresses. And if I go here to my Azure subscription where I have the resource group that contains my different components that runs the cluster, if I go here to refresh and to here, you would see that we have now two public IP addresses that were created a few seconds ago to route the traffic to the services. And they can go to open those two IP addresses. So let's run through the first one to here. This is my first app and then here I would have the second IP address for my second application. Next, I'll go to install Nginx ingress controller using Helm chart. So first thing to do is to add the Helm chart for ingress controller. Then I'll go to update those charts and then I'll go to launch the command for installing that chart using the Helm install command. And note here how I'm passing some parameters uh, like here the namespace for my ingress that uses the ingress namespace. I will go. To, I make sure that that namespace was created by this flag, create namespace. Then I'll set the number of replica for my controller to two. And then I want this um, ingress controller to run only on my uh, Linux virtual machines. This for until now doesn't run on uh, uh, Windows. It runs only on, Win on Linux. After that, 
Deploying the, the ingress controller will create a public IP address that should be used with that ingress controller. And with this command, get services, I'll go to get that uh, public IP address. So let's go to copy those different uh, uh, commands and then I'll run them from my command line. Clear this first, then run those different uh, uh, commands. So that will add Nginx into my repositories, update my repo available on my local machine. Then here the process will start for installing the Helm chart for the Ingress controller. And here we get congratulations, yeah, the Ingress controller was deployed successfully into my Kubernetes cluster. And then when I try to get the services from within the namespace Ingress, I'll get here the uh, IP, the external IP address for my con controller. And now we come to the interesting part where here, the change we want to make is that here, instead of using the public load balancer with the service name, we want to use the cluster IP. So I replace load balancer with cluster IP in both my deployment files. Make sure we save the changes. And then later I want to add an ingress controller that will go to route the traffic into those two services. So even if my services doesn't have a public IP address, it's only the ingress controller that would have that public IP address and it will be used to route traffic into those two services through using the uh, URL. So we would have something like slash uh, login, for example, uh, slash uh, products and so on. Let's go now to deploy this new service that have the that is now using the cluster IP instead of the root balancer. Actually, we cannot update it. So if I run here kube control apply, that won't work. So instead, what I need to do here is that I need first to go to delete the existing uh, resources, the existing services. So here I'll delete the service plus the deployment. That's fine. So deploying the first app, deleting the first app, and then deleting the second one. And then I go to redeploy them again. That will go to make both my applications not reachable within this uh, public IP address because actually this IP address itself was uh, deleted. Can't reach this page. So if I check from my Azure portal, if I go here where I did have the two IP addresses, if I go to refresh now, I can see clearly they are deleted and now it's actually uh, in progress for deleting the second uh, IP address. Now let's go to configure the ingress controller to route traffic into those two different services. So here I have a sample ingress controller implementation where here I'll specify the namespace for it and then I have some annotations that says here this is useful, this will be used by Nginx in case if I'm using multiple ingress controllers in my cluster, it will know which one it should be applied for this ingress resource. And then here I have some rules to route the traffic to the different services. So those rules will use the HTTP and I would have here configuration for backend. So this will say each request coming to the URL slash web app one will go to be routed to my web app one service. Remember, that is the name of the service that runs my application into here. And the same, I have a second rule for the backend that says each request that go to the slash web app two that will be routed into my web app two SBC. So this supposes that here you are using the public IP address as your URL, but if you want to specify a fully qualified domain name, FQDN, from here you would, uh, you can you could have something like this here that ends with .com or anything. And here uh, to simulate that I'm using the nip.io, which is a free and uh, simple tool that will allow you to route uh, traffic from a URL into, uh, into and a public IP address. So anything that goes like uh, like this here, it will be routed to the IP address that is specified before uh, nip.io. The same will be the same will be applied here. So anything that is uh, specific, any IP address specified within the nip into here, it will uh, the nip.io will route traffic into that IP address. So here I need to provide the IP address for my ingress controller. 
Remember we have already seen that IP address by running the command get services for the ingress namespace. And that is the address right here as the external IP. I'll copy it and then I'll go to replace it right here. And with that config, any request that comes into this uh, URL slash web app one will be redirected to the first uh, service. And if it go to web app two, it will be redirected to the second service. Let's go to deploy that uh, ingress resource. So for that, I go to run the command cube control apply dash F then the name of my ingress uh, resource file. Once the ingress resource was created, I can go to check here by running cube control get uh, ingress dash capital A to save from all the namespaces. And from here, we can see our ingress resource that was uh, created a few seconds ago. And it is using this host name that was specified into the YAML configuration. So I'll copy that and then I'll go to try to open that from my uh, browser. And the base address here won't go anywhere, but if I try to go to web app one, then that will route me to my Angular application. And if I go to web app two, that will route me to my second web application right here. So note here, this is not using HTTPS, so it's not secure, but uh, I'll demo that on the next uh, video. So that was how simple it is to create an ingress resource in order to route traffic between different applications inside the Kubernetes cluster. But before ending this video, I want to mention one thing that, uh, that is important here, which is the choice of the namespace. So actually your applications, including the services and the deployment all should, and also with the ingress, resources, they should live inside the same namespace. Note here how I'm using the same namespace for the service for the deployment and also for my ingress uh, resources. If you don't specify the same namespace for ingress and for the services, uh, that won't work because here you don't have any way actually to, uh, to specify the uh, service name within a different namespace inside the ingress resource.